Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ our light. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. This is St Paul Krygodon's Eucharist for the seventh Sunday of Eastertide, also known, of course, as the Sunday after Ascension. Our service began with the lighting of the Easter candle by Stephen Moore uh, for, of the St John's Ambulance Division, which is based at St Paul's. And at this time, our prayers remain with everyone working in the National Health Service and the care sector, including, of course, the members of St John's Ambulance. I'm Canon John Nee, celebrating the Eucharist here in Abergele with Gaina, my wife. But as ever, we will have lots of contributions from members and friends of St Paul's. And there will be the usual opportunity to make a spiritual communion as part of our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we pause for a moment to call to mind those things which we need to confess to God. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against Thee in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please Thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of Thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God on high.
collect for the seventh Sunday of Easter. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Judith Hogg, a member of St Paul's Choir, will now read from the Acts of the Apostles from her home in Warrington. And the Gospel reading will be proclaimed by Ben Lyons, who will be coming to the Aberconway Mission area after his ordination as deacon later this year. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women including Mary the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here ends the first reading. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now that they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave, me, gave to me I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given to me, so that they may be one as we are one. 
This is the gospel, the good news of the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was undoubtedly one of the greatest Christians of the 20th century. He was a German pastor uh, and theologian who became a member of the Confessing Movement, a group within the Lutheran Church deeply opposed to Nazism. Suspecting him of plotting against them, the Nazi government imprisoned him in 1943. And two years later, in April 1945, he was executed in Flossenburg concentration camp. During the two years he spent in prison, Bonhoeffer wrote many letters to his family and friends, as well as poems and theological reflections. And many of these, and letters back to him, have been collected in this book called Letters and Papers from Prison. It's become one of the great spiritual classics of the 20th century, and it's well worth reading. In one of the letters in the book, written to Eberhard Bethke in 1944, Dietrich Bonhoeffer compares the hope of resurrection offered by the Christian faith as contrasted with what is offered in the Old Testament and by other religions and mythologies. He says that many Christians think of their redemption mainly as being, and I quote from the letter, freed from cares, distress, fears and longings, from sin and death, in a better world beyond the grave. But, he asks, is this really the essential character of the Christian proclamation of Christ in the Gospels and by Paul? I should say it is not. The Christian hope sends a man back to his life on earth in a wholly new way. The Christian has no last line of escape available from earthly tasks and difficulties into the eternal, but like Christ himself, he must drink the earthly cup to the dregs, and only in his doing so is the crucified and risen Lord with him, and he is crucified and risen with Christ. This world must not be prematurely written off. In other words, what Bonhoeffer is saying is before we start thinking about heaven and its glories, we need to realise that Christ is to be met and followed here on earth, just where we are. And our reading from Acts this morning teaches us just that. It begins with the apostles asking the risen Lord when he is going to bring the kingdom in. Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel, they ask. Surely, they think, the kingdom must be coming now, after everything that's happened. But the Lord ignores their questions and instead commissions them to be his witnesses when he is no longer with them in his flesh. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In other words, never mind thinking about the coming of the kingdom, you've got a job to do in the world as it is, here and now, and I will give you the power to do it. When you do this, you will know that I am with you. And according to St Luke, in both his Gospel and in Acts, without further ado, Jesus is taken up into heaven, leaving them gazing up after him, dumbfounded and having to be reprimanded by the mysterious men in white robes. On this Sunday after Ascension, 
we too might, spiritually speaking, be tempted to gaze up into heaven after the Lord. Indeed, the Collect for Ascension Day could encourage us to do just that, when it prays, as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend, and with him continually dwell. And today's collect emphasises this when it prays, Send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour is gone before. So we might indeed be encouraged to think that the main task of a Christian is to long for heaven, to that moment when we hope we will enjoy that life of glory with him. But, as the Lord on the day of his ascension commissioned the apostles to be his witnesses here on earth, so now he challenges us to undertake the same task in 2020 in the midst of the coronavirus epidemic. There's nothing wrong in longing for heaven. Our destiny is indeed to share in his glory. But for now, we have a task to be getting on with and we mustn't be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good, as the saying goes. As Bonhoeffer so powerfully reminded us, we should not expect to be free of earthly cares and must be prepared to drink the earthly cup to the dregs. In fact, in the risen and ascended Christ, heaven and earth are united and we can begin to share in his glory as we obey his command to be his witnesses here in this troubled world. We won't be doing it in our own strength, for he has promised us his Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Michael Clutton will now lead our prayers of intercession from his home in Craigadon. So now let us pray for the whole Church of Christ and for all people according to their needs. <clears throat> As the Church of God, let us be still and pray together. God of glory, may your light shine in our Church community as you work among us and bless us with your presence. We offer you the gifts you have given us and our various ministries. We offer you ourselves in the area you have placed us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Ireland as we prepare to elect the Archbishop. We pray for Gregory, our Bishop. We pray for Barry, Archdeacon of Montgomery, for Poole Mission Area and for Steve Wilson, Mission Area Leader. Today on Anglican Communion Sunday, we pray for all members of our Anglican Communion throughout the world. We pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and for all primates and bishops. We pray for members of the Anglican Consultative Council, the Secretary General, Dr. Josiah Edouwu Firon, and finally for the staff at the Anglican Communion Office in London and the UN offices in Geneva and New York. As we all play our part in these trying times, let us give thanks for the work of all active ministers, ordained and lay, for all retired clergy and for lay church members who together ensure that we may all worship you each week, despite our inability to attend formal worship in church buildings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, for the many diverse nations of this world, for their governments, their rulers and their people. God of glory, may the whole world come to know you and give you honour and praise. Encourage us all to stand up to the devil when he prowls, firm in our faith and strengthened with your power. May your kingdom come and your will be done. And we bring to you, Lord, our nation, our world, as it fights against the coronavirus. We pray for all who have died, all who have lost loved ones, and all who are leading the battle against the virus. We pray that world leaders, health authorities, and medical staff may find the weapons and the strength to, to defeat this killer. We pray for all the doctors, nurses, and health workers who give so unstintingly of their time, their knowledge, and their skills to help those afflicted by the virus. Lord, may a cure be found in the short term to lead the world back to normality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for our families and friends throughout the world and for our neighbours in the Abercornby Mission area. God of glory, may our homes, schools, shops, offices and factories become places where your glory is seen and experienced in the ordinary things, the everyday routines, the pots and pans of life. Fill us to overflowing with ongoing thankfulness, both in the sunlight and in the storm. Pray and give thanks for those of our neighbours and friends who are doing so much to help those less able through these trying times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the poor and those in trouble. God of glory, with your special affection for the discarded and marginalised, the weak and the vulnerable, we pray for all those who find life an exhausting struggle or who long for some respite from pain or depression. Support them in their troubles Bring healing and reassurance and touch them with the gentleness of your peace. We pray especially for those who lack the capacity to fend for themselves in these difficult times through mental and physical difficulties. We pray for all who we know who are sick, in pain, stressed or unhappy, for all who are caring for them and all who give their time in helping others. We are aware that there are many whose pains and anxieties are hidden from us. So in a moment of silence, let us pray for each and all of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. God of glory, we thank you that through your, your ascension into heaven, the way was opened for us to receive the Holy Spirit. Prepare our hearts each day to welcome you. Pray for all who we know who have died recently or whose anniversaries occurred at this time. 
We pray for those who mourn their passing and miss the love they once shared. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of glory, we thank you that through your ascension into heaven, the way was open for us to receive the Holy Spirit. Prepare our hearts each day to welcome you. So finally, we bless thy holy name for the grace and virtue declared in all thy saints. Grant that we, rejoicing in their fellowship and following their good examples, may thy sons appearing be set with them on his right hand and be made partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Hear us, O heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be our honour and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. So with the bread and wine here on the table, we continue now with the Eucharistic prayer in which through the power of the Holy Spirit, the bread and wine become for us the body and blood of Christ, his life shared with us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Through thy most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his most glorious resurrection manifestly appeared to all his apostles and in their sight ascended up into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, thither we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory, praise and thanksgiving be unto thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, creator and sustainer of all things, maker of man in thine own image, who gave us thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. There he made the one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Therefore we beseech thee, O merciful Father, to sanctify with thy Holy Spirit these thy gifts of bread and wine that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, may be partakers of his most precious body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you 
and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, making the memorial of the blessed Passion, mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of thy dearly beloved Son, as he hath commanded us, rejoicing in the gift of the Holy Spirit, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory, we thy servants, with all thy holy people, do set forth before thy divine majesty this bread of eternal life, and this cup of everlasting salvation. And we beseech thee to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and to grant to us and thy whole church remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and be numbered in the glorious company of thy saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, in whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. The bread which we break. This is not the communion of the body of Christ. We who are many are one bread, one body. For we are all partakers of the one bread. As our Saviour Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Draw near and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. opportunity for each one of you, if you wish, to make a spiritual communion. O blessed Lord, in union with the faithful throughout the world, at every altar of your church where the Eucharist is being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. 
I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. Since I cannot now receive you in the sacrament, I invite you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with heart and mind and soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me so that I may live and die in your love. Amen. post-communion prayer for today. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our service is almost ended. And my thanks go, as always, to Chris and to all who, those who have taken part in our service this morning. Not forgetting to thank Gaynor, who's with me here and is our camera person. In the week ahead, as we rejoice in our ascended Lord, Christ our King, we prepare to celebrate the great Feast of Pentecost, when Easter draws to a close, and we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, in which we all share. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ, our exalted King, pour on you his abundant gifts, that you may serve him and reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>